This is my story about how I found Jesus. I started off as a young man coming to Texas Tech University, thinking that I just wanted to party and enjoy myself. That was really my only plan. And I did that. I drank a lot, smoked a lot of weed, just did a lot of partying and just mischievous activities. And I basically came to realize that I wasn't in control of the situation anymore. I had a couple of run-ins with the cops, uh, and it kind of stopped being fun after a while. I came to realize that I was addicted to, to drugs and alcohol, and that I couldn't control it even if I wanted to. I would try and stop multiple times on different occasions, and I wasn't able to. And it got worse and worse to the point where I couldn't go to school anymore. Uh, I couldn't really function in society. I wasn't able to talk to people without feeling just so insecure in myself. And finally, I couldn't even face myself. So it would just kind of turn into longer and longer sprees of me not being sober at all. I got a DWI. That was probably the worst you know, run-in I had. And I, at this point, was a uh, like junior year of college. I wasn't cool with my dad. I wasn't cool with my mom. I just didn't really have any real friends anymore. I decided for the last time that I was going to get sober. I had just, I, I'd wanted to be sober multiple times. But this last time was a little different because I visited my mom at home. She invited me to see Adele. On the way to the airport to come back to Lubbock, my dad was like, hey, we can go to a Dallas Cowboy game. And uh, just make sure you, know, you can tell your teachers that you'll be gone for like the week or something. And at this point, I think he was just trying to make friends with me again, because I just wasn't really responsive at all. I was thinking about all the school I had been missing and that really missing another week wouldn't make a difference, but he didn't know that. And so I started having a panic attack in the car. And that was the first time I had a sober panic attack, where like I'm getting all tingly and I wasn't breathing right. My mom's like, here, Lee, have a drink of tea. I'm like, no, mom, that's not going to help me right now. And the only thing I knew what to do in that situation was to be honest. When before, like, I tried everything I could to not be honest, and it was tearing me apart, literally, to just live this double life with my family because even though I wasn't honest with them and they knew I had a DWI, they didn't realize what my life was like here in Lubbock. You know, I avoided the Wesley, like the plague. You know, I knew John and he would invite me to come here, but I didn't like the idea of it. I was very against organized religion and the idea of God. And I had, you know, my own God complex and ego and pride that made me think that people that followed Jesus were weak and that they were all lying to themselves. And one time, you know, I came here and the only reason I came uh, you know, I don't want to name names, but the person who invited me, I was like, I'll come if you let me finish that bottle. So I was sitting behind that booth while someone was running sound, and I was drunk. And that was, that was like some of my first interactions here, and looking around, and everyone seemed happy. And, you know, I thought no one knew, but probably everyone knew. That was my first interactions here, was being not sober. Back to when I was in the car having a panic attack with my mom, I decided to be honest with her in that moment, and I told her, everything that I've done here. I smoke weed every day, I've done this drug, that drug, and the other, I don't go to school anymore. And I came back to tech, and she's like, just, just go back and, I don't know, do your best, Lee. I mean, really, you know, she, she couldn't help me in that situation. No person could help me, or ever really helped me the way that I needed to be helped, because I had a spiritual disease. I came to realize that when I met somebody in recovery. When I came back to school, I decided I was going to be sober. And then I drank, I think, one more time after that and realized, okay, I need to not only smoke weed, I need to not drink either. I can't even do it on special occasions. i got to be done with it. And I had that resolution multiple times, but I always fell back on it because that's just the nature of addiction. I'm not in control of it whether I want to be or not. I found the program of recovery, and from there, my life has been forever changed because at first it connected me to what I understood as a higher power, something, someone, anything greater than myself. And that was how I described God for about a year, a year and a half. And then I discovered that my God is Jesus Christ. And that happened when 
I started reading the Bible because I discovered this practice called a two-way prayer where uh, I read a little bit of the Bible, then I meditate for a little bit, and then I ask a question to God, and, and I write down what he would imagine he would tell me. I do that every morning now, but because the practice of that involved reading a little bit of the Bible every day, I just enjoyed what I was reading, and I just became more and more open to the, the fact that Jesus Christ is, is God, and from there, Someone invited me to a Bible study. I said, you know, the prayer, accepting Jesus Christ as my God. And, and I told them, like, I'm still doubtful, though. Like, I'm not sure. Like, maybe one day I'll accept Jesus. And they were like, dude, even priests and pastors have doubts sometimes. It's not about having a complete, like, absolute blind faith all the time. It can be something that wavers sometimes. And I said... Okay, well, in that case, let's do it. I'm ready. Bring it on. Because that's what helped me get sober in the first place was accepting the idea that a higher power could restore me to sanity. And so for me, it was just taking another leap of faith. And so I made that leap of faith to Jesus, and then I started realizing that all you know, the Christians that loved me in my life were, were right, and that I was you know, avoiding everything they said, but... You know, there's some really key people in my life that have been there for me all along and have encouraged me. One of those people is John, John Starrett. And, you know, we've had conversations where, you know, he's told me that he's been praying for me for 10 years. You know, he's known me since eighth grade and kind of saw the dark path that was going off into. And, and another person I'm so grateful for is my girlfriend, Heather, who I've been with for a little over five months now and kind of uh, goes alongside and side with me uh, finding Jesus. You know, she invited me to the church that she goes to and that's where I got baptized on September 9th. I remember that because 9 plus 9 equals 18. That was the year. From there, all these blessings have been happening in my life pretty much all the same time, like almost like all around, you know, me getting baptized and finding Jesus, like you know, all the physical blessings like a car and a job and grad school and roommates and a girlfriend and restored family, that all came and I'd say that is all amazing, but really just me finding myself has been the hugest thing, being comfortable with myself and loving who I am and having confidence and now, you know, having Jesus to rely on every moment of doubt that I have and recognizing what my true purpose is today, which is to be helpful to others, to help other people in recovery and addiction, because as an addict, I am one of the only people that can help another addict because I've experienced what they have. And I have a daily reprieve from my addiction and depression and, and long-term anxiety based on my continual practice of my spiritual condition, which is just focusing on God. And that doesn't mean every day is easy. There are, there are tough days. And I wouldn't say like, my, like all day is tough anymore. It's, I don't have like an entire day that sucks anymore. It's normally like a morning or a moment. And you know, this morning I was just kind of having a bummer of a, of a morning. I, I slept in and I was kind of hard on myself for that. And I didn't get out of the house until I came here to do this. But I know that as long as I just rely on the spiritual tools that I have laid out for me, which is my program of recovery and, you know, reading the Bible and going to church and helping others, I will be okay. And not only that, you know, I'll be good. I'll be great. I can be helpful to others. And I also want to thank you, Jason, for being a spiritual mentor to me. And just whenever we've met up, whether we're talking about just, just myself and how I can improve or or how I can be more holy in my relationships. You've just been such a, an amazing guide to me and such a beacon of Jesus' light. And so I thank you so much for that. And, you know, full circle moment. Now I'm back in the Wesley, the place I avoided for years. I've literally known about this place and just something wasn't right for me at the time. And I believe that's okay. You know, God's got his timing and I wasn't ready yet. I hadn't been 
beaten down yet by my own will, by my own delusional thinking. Finally, I was beaten down enough to realize I needed to surrender. I needed to let go of myself and grab on to something greater than me, which at first was the people that wanted to help me, and now I have a, a conscious connection with God that allows me to follow His will and to realize that I can trust more than just myself. And if anything, now I can't trust myself. Like, my entire thinking has been flipped, and that's, to me, it, just the definition of what a spiritual experience is, is my character, my personality has changed, which has allowed me to function in society. It's allowed me to not completely demolish all of the blessings that God has given me because now I recognize them as blessings. I recognize that to feel good, I need to be grateful and I need to be thankful. And now I know who to be thankful to to truly feel grateful and thankful, I need to recognize who it's from. You know, like if someone gave me a meal out of nowhere, I can be thankful for that meal, but if I know who made it for me, that's, that gives that meal like so much more value to me. So now that I know that Jesus Christ has been helping me all along, has saved me from, you know, car wrecks. You know, I've been in three car wrecks at, at, at Tech. One was on my way up to Tech where I almost died and you know I have this massive scar on my stomach where my lungs were, were collapsed and I was in the hospital for like a week and, and it was a miracle. It was Jesus saving me then. You know when I was on campus smoking weed and the cops show up and somehow there wasn't enough evidence to arrest me you know that was just Jesus saving me then and even when I got my DWI I didn't die. I luckily didn't kill anybody, spent the night in jail, you know, that was Jesus saving me then, you know, no matter what was happening to me, whether like the consequences looked good or looked bad, it was all Jesus helping me eventually get to him. And now I have to continue relying on him and I see that as a beautiful thing. And in moments I get upset that, you know, my spiritual condition feels fragile, like, oh, I have to rely on God, but that's the moment I'm not grateful, because today my life is so blessed. I get to hang out with beautiful people and appreciate them, and, and I get to see other people the way God sees them. I get to look at someone with love and passion and, you know, look at someone do something cute and go, oh, that was, that was really cute. And before, I was so greedy and jealous and resentful and angry, and now I know I can give all those negative feelings up to God and recognize I am so grateful to be an addict in recovery because I've experienced such darkness and realized that now because I'm in the light, I know more of who God is. And you know, some people won't ever experience that. Some people haven't yet. And I just hope that perhaps me sharing this testimony will help one person because if it can help one person, that's one person's life that God can save, and that's all I want to do.